an expert in the law stood up to test him. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, Jesus replied. How do you read it, he answered. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You, will answer, you have answered correctly, Jesus said. Do this, and you will live. So be it. It was kind of weird traveling across country because you did not know what to expect in these troubled times. But, you know, I heard so many times, well, 2020 is over. Whew, 2020 is over. So? <laughs> 2021 is coming and has anything really changed? You know, we're, we're at my dad's house. The news is always on and everything. I am sick and tired of seeing and hearing all of it. Boy, does it not bring you down. I know why I don't ever watch television much. But God is in complete control. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the great commandment that He has given us going into this new year. But let's start with prayer. Father in heaven, I thank you and praise you for you are a God that is in complete control. You work all things together for good to those who love you, Father. And Lord, the greatest thing that we could ever know is to love you, to know you, and to serve you. We are crea created beings, created for a purpose. And you first loved us so that we could love you and love others. Fathers, we seek your word today and your will. Help us not to just be hearers of the word, but doers also. And we just thank you and praise you for all the things that you're doing in good times and in bad times. We thank you for Jesus Christ, who is our King of kings and Lord of lords. May we serve him with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our strength. We just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, ironically, which there's never any irony, this is one of the things that John handed me today, and I haven't read it yet, but someone's got the right idea. It just says neighbor on here. And that's one of the things I want to address to you today is, who is your neighbor? Jesus answered that question. And are you living a life that shows others that you are a good neighbor? Now, the Answer question first, because several have asked you already. I didn't cut my hair. I said I might while I was gone. Nope, because I'll cut mine. There you go. If you didn't hear that, Sherry said, if you cut your hair, I'm cutting mine. And to top it off, as short as you cut your hair, I'm cutting mine that short. <laughs> so it's still growing out a little longer, guys. Because right I'll let her yeah. manicure me and take there. care of it. So right here? Right here. Right here. The good? Yes. Okay. Just don't wear a man bun. Well, I'm not going to say no, <laughs> but I'll try not to. How's that? Yes, dear? <laughs> no, I don't think so either, but I, I don't know. And one of the things, if you hadn't figured out yet, Barry, you know, when you go to your mama's house and you go and your wife's along with you, you do what your wife says, not what your mama says. Trust me. Cause, huh? Oh, I did. Most time, didn't I? Oh, the towels. Never mind. Different story. Because they want to know that your love is not divided. Now, how do you think God feels? Yep. See, I play that right into there. He wants your full attention, your full love. He's a jealous God. He wants all of you, not part of you. So I want to ask you this question right now, starting off. Did you give Him all of you in 2020? And did you, especially in a troubled year, did you fear the things of the world or did you put your faith in God? Just like Bob said, there, there's nothing to fear. Jesus says, fear the one who can put your soul into hell forever and ever. There's nothing else to fear if you're a child of God. It doesn't matter if 2021 is any better or any worse, guys. And I have a feeling it is not going to be a lot better. I don't know about you, but just watching television alone, whew, 
Like I said, with all the smear campaigns going on in Georgia and all the, the new viruses coming out and everything, it is a troubled time for the world. And they need to see your light shining so that they can see your good deeds and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So today we're going to talk about the greatest commandment. And in the songs that uh, Debbie picked out, we're supposed to seek the kingdom of God first and His righteousness. And then all these other things will be added unto you. Those promises are constant throughout the Bible. And the greatest thing that you can ever know is loving the Lord knowing Him and serving Him. Notice each one of those is the greatest thing because they're all the same thing. Hear, O, hear, O Israel. Israel. To hear is to obey. To know God is to love God. To love God is to be obedient to His commandments. They all work together. So I'm going to start in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1. These are the commandments and statutes and ordinances that the Lord your God has instructed me to teach to you. To follow, to follow these, not just hear them and not obey them, but to follow them in the land that you're about to enter and possess. And we do live in a blessed country. We live in a time that the Word of God and commentaries and freedom to, to meet with one another is greater than it's ever been. And there's so many opportunities to tell others about Jesus Christ even when we have restrictions upon us. You're supposed to do this, verse 2, so that you and your children and your grandchildren may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life. We kind of forget about the fear, don't we? But even as physical children, first thing you do is learn to fear and respect your father. Then you realize your father will take care of you if he's a good father. If he's not a good father, God even uses that to draw you to him so that you see a good, perfect father. I don't know what your situation was. But a father should take care of his child. And a father should be feared by his child because of the discipline that might come. But perfect love, when you, know, when you have experienced that, it casts out all fear. But you've got to know that God is the one who has the authority and the power to cast your soul for all eternity into hell. And when you realize that and realize that He gave His one and only Son, instead that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life, then how can you not love Him? Fear and love go hand in hand. And you're supposed to do this so that your children and grandchildren will know. And then it goes on to say, "...by keeping all of His statutes and commands that I give you." So you have to be a hearer and a doer. You can't just be a hearer. First thing your children will see in that is your hypocrisy. They won't want the kind of religion that you have because you don't have a relationship with God. You have a religion that you're serving. You don't have a heavenly Father that you love and adore because He loves and adores you. You're keeping a set of rules or whatever it is. You're to love the Lord your God. By keeping His statutes and commandments that I give you, so that your days may be prolonged. You even get a promise here of longer life. Verse 3, Hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe them. Not just hear them, but be careful to do them. So that you may prosper and multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you. Hear, O hear, O Israel... The Lord your God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength or might, depending what your version has. So fear shows you that you can love God because He first loves you. Reverent fear is something totally different than fear of condemnation and judgment. As a child, you don't have fear of condemnation and judgment, but you still have fear that God will discipline His children. And the New Testament goes on to tell you that discipline is a good thing. What parent would not discipline his child? You shall love the Lord your God, fear to love, and you to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your soul, and your strength. Everything that you have that encompasses your being... Notice that mind is not here in the Old Testament, but it is in the New Testament when Jesus says that. It's here, but it wasn't a thought process of that day. In Jesus' day, everybody was intellectual, kind of like this day. 
And there's so many other ways and so many other truths and maybe so many other lives. I don't, I don't know. But Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. And you're to love Him with everything. Not most, not part, not some, not here, not now. With everything, every single moment of every single day, in every single circumstance. Love is a choice. It's a choice that you make to love someone else. And God has given you every reason why you can love Him and should love Him. Love is something that encompasses all of you. Just to ask your spouse, ask them if you can hold back any certain part. They'll say, give it all to me. I want your full affection. And I want you to show it with the way that you live and treat me. It's a choice that encompasses all of you. It's something that you must act upon because if you don't act upon it, the words kind of fall meaningless, don't they? And it's something that endures. It stands the test of time, whatever circumstances. That's what love is. And you're to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your strength. Now, if you read this year's Bible reading plan, and we have a reading plan for next year, but I'm putting it on your shoulders. It's not something we're going to follow. It's simply, and it's laying right here for you to pick up, it's simply a check sheet showing that you've read each uh, book and chapter. It's up to you to follow. If you follow through this year, we just finished up Revelation, and I hope you read Revelation differently than you've read it before and got what Jesus was re revealing to John, that things like 2020 will happen, <laughs> and they're probably going to get worse. But don't worry because there will come a day when God will make everything right and if you stand on the side of Jesus then you will be made right anew refreshed walking with God for all eternity the Old Testament God called for his children to love him and love him only and serve him they were to love him with everything that they had and they showed this by the way that they obeyed God's commandments all of them not the ones they they picked and choose and they're to teach these commands to their children not just by word but by how they live they showed them that their faith and love for God was genuine and they taught it to their children to their grandchildren, and so on and so forth. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 6. What was the result of that? So that our children and grandchildren would fear the Lord, not lose that fear of God who could cast their soul into hell, but then learn to love the Lord their God who gave them the opportunity to love Him back by simply believing in faith in Jesus Christ the most incredible gift ever to the most undeserving creation ever. And all of creation, what we cannot fathom and understand from Revelation but get a glimpse of, is watching how God is working with His children. Is He working in your life? And you get that promise that your family will live long lives, that they'll multiply and they'll prosper and so forth. There is no room in this relationship, if there is a relationship, for divided allegiance, for divided love, for divided service. The greatest thing is to know and love and serve the Lord your God. Matthew 6, 24 says that no one can serve two masters. And that's where I'm going now if you want to turn to Matthew chapter 6. Jesus is teaching. He is enlightening people with these new crazy thoughts. And all he's doing is expounding upon the law of God that's always been there. The law that man tried to expound upon and made it in such a way that people couldn't even adhere to the law and made it burdensome. And they actually kept people from the truth. Jesus says it's about a relationship, about your relationship with God because of me. And you cannot serve two masters. Verse 21, no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money, or God and mammon, or God and riches, whatever your translation says again. If you notice, there's an either or an or. And what's in between the either or the or? Love. 
because you have feared the Lord your God enough, you've seen His love for you, and you love Him back because He first loved you. You can't see that unless you know Him because of His love. Then you can start to have that loving relationship because He chose to love you first. Will you choose to love Him back? Show it with everything that you have so that the world knows that you love God. Either you will love one or hate the other. Choice is yours. There's no middle ground here. You're either going to love God or you're going to hate or despise Him. But it's hard to say that you hate Him because that sounds so terrible. But the opposite of love is hate. Ask my wife again. If I don't show her how much I love her, then she probably won't use the word hate, but she sure won't say that I love her because I'm doing the opposite of that. If I love her, I will show her. And when I make mistakes, I'll apologize and go on and try to show her that much more and learn from my mistakes. But I'm in a relationship with her that, that we have both chosen to have, and we've chosen to make it endure. It was difficult just on the trip out there because I hadn't seen her in weeks. She's been quarantined. And then I'm with her every second of every day driving across country. <laughs> Woo! We learned to know each other again, didn't we? And I learned to keep both hands on the wheel. <laughs> no one can serve two masters. Either he'll hate the one and love the other, or because the decision comes from this whether you love or hate. Whoever you love, you're going to be devoted to, aren't you? He will be devoted to the one and despise the other. Love creates an action. Love is a choice, and there is an action that results. I will either be devoted or despise. Even if I hadn't seen her in weeks, my devotion will grow stronger again because of the loving bond that we have, the commitment we've made to each other, or I'll say, oh, this is going to be a long trip, and start despising her. I didn't, by the way, just so you know, fast forward. We had a wonderful time. I just had to learn the... the Guidelines. You stop at 9 o'clock, we relax, we play a little game, we spend a little time together. Wonderful time together. <laughs> <laughs> because of your love or hate, you will serve one or the other. God or mammon, riches, money, whatever it is. That will be the thing that you start fearing the loss of. It goes full circle right back. So then you will worry about the clothes that you wear, the things that you do, the security you have, the freedom that you have, who's president, what, what our financial status is like in this country, whatever it is. Or you'll love the Lord your God and you won't fear both God and man. You'll fear God only. Jesus goes on to say then in verse 25, Therefore I tell you then, do not worry about your life. And remember John 14, he told his disciples not to worry that he was going to return for them that He wanted them to be with Him, and He was going to prepare a place for them. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, or about your body, or what you'll wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? Consider how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his glory was adorned like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, <clears throat> will, sorry, thank you. Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles strive after those things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But instead, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Not only do you not have to worry, but if you seek God's kingdom first, Jesus as your King then all the other things will be added to you anyway. But wait a minute, what if I'm suffering in this world and everything? Well, Paul explained that. He said it doesn't matter 
he would lose everything to gain Christ. And that in all circumstances, he would be at peace because he knew that he could endure anything with Jesus Christ as his strength and his comfort. If you're a believer, if you're a Christian, if you're like Christ, the world should mean nothing to you. The desire of it, the fear of it, the love of it. It should simply be that every day that we have sunshine, and it's not burning us like in Revelation, every day that we have freedom, every day that we have loved ones in our life, that we thank God for His blessings, His grace upon grace upon grace. Because we are the ones that sinned against God and deserve His eternal wrath for our sins. But instead, He chose to love us. And you just need to believe and choose to love Him in return with all that you have. Instead of worrying, let God add all these things unto you. Live a life that shows that you believe. Live a life of love. So back to Deuteronomy chapter 6. I'm going to continue reading that chapter. Starting in verse 6. These words I am commanding you today to be upon your hearts. That was their thinking process in the Old Testament rather than their minds and their intellect. You thought with your heart because your heart was what made you decide what to do. Even to the point of your bowels, because you get that funny feeling in your stomach that you know you should do this or that. And you follow after your heart and your bowels. And you shall teach them diligently, not just teach them, but teach them diligently to your children. And speak of them when you sit at home, and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as a reminder on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the doorposts of your houses and on your gates. And when the Lord your God brings you into the land He swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that He would give you a land with great and splendid cities that you did not build by your own hands. <laughs> you don't have the things you have because you built them up or because of your brains or intellect or how hard you work. You have them because God blessed you and gave you His grace so that you could be gracious to others. With all the houses full of everything which you did not fill them, with the wells that you did not dig, and with the vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant, so that you don't rejoice in these things and get drunk off of these things, the things that Babylon wants to entice you with and draw you away with. The vineyards that you did not plant, and when you eat and are satisfied... Be careful not to forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, because you're either a slave to the things of this world or a slave to God, based off of your love and devotion to which one is your master. Fear the Lord your God, there it is again, and serve Him only, and take your oaths in His name. Do not follow other gods, the gods of the people around you. For the Lord your God who is among you is a jealous God. Otherwise, the anger of the Lord your God will be kindled against you, and He will wipe you off the face of the earth. Do not test the Lord your God as, as you tested Him at, at Massah. You are to diligently keep the commands of the Lord your God and the testimonies and statutes He has given you. Do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, so that it may be well with you, and that you may enter and possess the good land that the Lord your God swore to give your fathers." driving out all your enemies before you. You're not only not to take on their gods, but you're to drive out that type of thing from your life. You, there is no room for two types of affection. You either love God or you hate Him. You're either devoted to Him or you're devoted to your other love. What is the meaning of the decrees and statutes and ordinances that the Lord our God has commanded you? Then you are to tell, tell them, oh, I've skipped in the future, I'm sorry. In the future when your son asks, what is the meaning of the decrees and statutes and ordinances that the Lord our God has commanded you? Then you are to tell him, we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Before our eyes, the Lord inflicted great and devastating signs and wonders in Egypt on Pharaoh and all of his household. 
Now remember, Pharaoh was God. Remember that they were slaves, but yet they cried to go back to Egypt because they feared Pharaoh more than they feared God. They had plenty, even though they were slaves, in Egypt. And they didn't think that they would have plenty out in the wilderness. But the promise of God was a land flowing with milk and honey. But instead of fearing the Lord, they feared what man could do to them, even though they saw them destroyed by the waters that came crashing down. And this earth will be destroyed by fire next. What are you clinging to and holding on to? Is it fear and love for the Lord or the things of this world? But he brought us out from there to lead us in and give us the land that he swore, swore to our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to observe all these statues and to fear the Lord our God, that we may always be prosperous and preserved as we are to this day. And if we are careful to observe every one of these commandments before the Lord our God, as he commanded us, then, then that will be our righteousness. Well, now you know the rest of the story. There's none righteous, no, not one. You and I can't live by the law. The law can't save us. But God in His mercy sent His Son Jesus to die for our sins so that we would be a new creation in Christ, that God would actually come and dwell with us and empower us and take us all the way home. So are you living by the power of the Spirit today? And the fruits of the Spirit are, and you can fill in the blanks there, put them in there. Do you see those things in your life? And are they increasing in your life? And are they feeding others? Because that's the purpose of a fruit tree, is to feed others. First your children and grandchildren, and then the world, and even your enemies. So that they may see Jesus Christ living and dwelling in you. So we fast forward to the New Testament. Because we can't keep God's righteous standards, but Jesus can. He did. He gave up heaven. What are you willing to give up for Him? And then He laid down His life and died after teaching us and living that life in obedience to God. He who was equal with God did not use His power or authority, but laid it down to serve you and I. And it's clear in his teachings, and we'll go over more of his teachings this year, that we are to follow his commands if we do really love him. In John chapter 3, we read, of course, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son. But I want to read before and after that. Starting in verse 12. If I have told you about earthly things and you did not believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? We are spiritual beings living a life in this flesh. Are you living your life for King Jesus or are you living it for King Alan? And there are conflicting interests there. Trust me, that's why I put Alan in there. Every day I have to deny myself, take up my cross, and in 2020 we didn't suffer too much, guys, and then follow in the footsteps of Jesus. I've told, if I've told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. And they knew exactly what Jesus was talking about here because we went right back to the times of Deuteronomy. That everyone who believes in Him may have eternal life. If you believe in Jesus Christ you will be saved from eternal death. You will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Starts off with a preposition tying that together. Then we get another preposition in verse 17. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but instead to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Verse 19, this is the verdict. What does your life show? The light has come into the world, but men love the darkness rather than the light. 
How do we see this? How do we know this? Because their deeds, what they did, were evil. Well, maybe they're not a murderer or a rapist or anything else, but maybe they are disrespectful to their parents. Maybe, just maybe, they love someone other than God with divided devo devotion. Maybe they don't love riches with all their heart, all their soul, all their strength. But anything divided means that you're committing adultery, just like we saw in Revelation. That you're having love and affections and your deeds show it for things other than the Creator. You have them for created things. Everyone who does evil hates the light, there we get the hate, and does not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. There we have the fear again. But, on complete opposite, whoever practices the truth, they come into the light, so that it may be seen clearly that what he has done has been accomplished by God. You couldn't have righteousness on your own, but you can live a righteous, holy, set-apart, sanctified life because you let the Spirit of God live through you. Wow! God does it all for His children. What father wouldn't do whatever he could for his children? And God can do it all for His children, especially bring you into eternal life. Do you love Him? Is your love divided? Will you give Him everything? Have you come out of the darkness and into the light? Are you living a life of love, a life of light, like that you should? Jesus, again, I'll remind you, was a sacrificial lamb that we see in Revelation that's worthy to open the scrolls, that will judge, that will ride back in victorious. And you will spend eternity in a place that is perfect. Because everything that comes perfect comes from God. And He wants to give it to His children. But that requires denying yourself, taking up your cross, and following after Jesus. So I ask you in 2021, is that what you are doing? Always a time, New Year's, a time for uh, resolutions to be made. You're going to change this. You're going to do better here. And there's always a time to come and kneel at the foot, feet of Jesus and say, forgive me and help me to live a life that shows that I love you more and more and more. So let's revisit the greatest commandment. Do you know what it is? Love the Lord your God. Merle read it to us this morning. The people of that day knew what it was, and one guy even tried to justify himself. So we find it in several different Gospels. Matthew 22 reads this way in verse 34. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they themselves gathered together. One of them, an expert of the law, tested him with a question. Teacher, which commandment is greatest in the law? Jesus declared from Deuteronomy chapter 6, that's why I read there first, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all of your mind. Don't think anymore your crazy ways of intellect. Instead... Think that you are a created being, loved by God, adored by Him, created for a purpose, and live out your life loving God, living for that purpose. Longing for the day, no matter what the circumstances are, to hear, well done. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. So now we get the application that Jesus is teaching. If you love the Lord your God... With everything, if you're not divided, then you'll be able to love your neighbor as you love yourself. What a big statement. Because I've said it before and I'll say it again, I love myself a lot. That's where most, James is tells that, most of our quarrels and things come from. Because I didn't get my way. I want Alan's way. I want his things. Sure, I want others' ways too. I, I, I look out for them. I probably do as much as most people. But I still want my way. Because my heart is divided against my way and God's way. All of the law and the prophets hang on these two commands. Everything written in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. But now we have a new covenant. 
written in the blood of Jesus, a new promise that anyone who believes in the finished work of Jesus Christ will be saved. But Jesus is clear. He's clear in the letters to the churches in Revelation. If you hear these words, then obey them. In Mark chapter 12, verse 28, we read this account. Now one of the scribes had come up and heard their debate. Noticing how well Jesus had answered them, he asked him which commandment is the most important of all. Jesus replied, this is the most important. And he goes directly back to Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, which means hear and obey. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and all of your strength. We get even more that encompasses you as a being. And the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. And if you look at the text, the first one is singular and the second one is plural. Because it is one commandment divided out into two commandments. If you realize God's love for you, you have to love others. Because God died for them just as He died for you in the person of Jesus Christ. And He has come to dwell in them if they believe, just like you, in His Spirit. You're no better. You're just blessed. And we have the privilege and the right to tell others so that God can bless them as well. Now, I could go on to predestination and other things and throw other things in a complicated in religion. But if God has come to you and called you then you are to serve Him and show others the way. You don't know who He's going to call, but He's going to use you to do it. And yeah, He'll use someone else if you don't. He'll still accomplish His way, but you won't be used by God to have those blessings in your life. Teach your children and their children. Talk about it when you get up, when you go to bed, when you walk along. Write it on the doorpost of your house. Live out your faith so that you will be a light to others. Verse 32, right teacher, the scribe replied, because the man knew the truth. You have stated correctly that God is one and there is no other but Him. And to love Him with all your heart and with all your understanding and with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. He even knew that which is more important than all burnt offering and sacrifices. He puts that in there. When Jesus saw that the man had answered wisely, he said, you are not far from the kingdom of God. The guy's got the answers, but will he do them? Will he choose to hear and obey? John had his revelation of the things that would come, and they all lead up to that day. Don't miss the point all along the way of what this means, what that means. Bad things will happen. Don't quote me on this. 2021 may be worse. I hope it's not. But look for the opportunities to live a life that brings glory and honor to God. And live it out so that your children and grandchildren see your faith. And that the world around you does. And we're going to get directly to this neighbor thing in just a minute. He who has ears... Let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord says. To love God with everything and love others as much as you love yourself. And love means putting it into action. So in Luke chapter 10, one day an expert in the law stood up to test him. This is verse 25. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The choice is yours. If you love the Lord your God because of your relationship with Jesus Christ, you will have eternal life in lieu of eternal death. Amen. Verse 26, Jesus says, What is written in the law then? How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Wise answer. Jesus said, You have answered correctly. But then He says one more thing. Do this and you will live. Live an abundant life now that you never knew could be so rich because you were worrying about the riches of this world. Instead, you'll be building up riches in the kingdom of heaven where moths can't come in and destroy and thieves can't come in and steal. 
you will be living for King Jesus, loving and serving Him because of His love for you. You will have no fear of condemnation because perfect love casts out all fear. If you know the truth, then you have to live the truth. And then others will see. But this man, he asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? And Jesus took up the question and said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down the same road. But when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So too, when a Levite came to that spot and saw him, he passed by on the other side. Two people that were religious, two people who knew the law. They knew the answer that the man had just gave, but they weren't willing to do it. For whatever reason, doesn't matter. They should have, they didn't. Then a Samaritan comes along, but complete opposition, when a Samaritan on a journey came upon him, he looked at him and had compassion, love. Love to the point of being that this person is pitiful because of the state that they're in. And they need someone to bring them help and comfort and love to show them what they know in their heart they believe. Because the man's already said, and to love your neighbor, but he has to justify who his neighbor is. Because certainly this person isn't my neighbor, right? Well, if you understand the story, more than likely where it's at, the neighbor was a fellow Jew. Wow, this story is so sad. It's, it's disgusting in my opinion. Because we knew right, but we weren't even willing to help someone of our own, not someone else, that was down on their luck for whatever reasons. We were too busy. We didn't want to get our hands dirty. It would make us unclean, whatever it was. So the Samaritan, the one that knew about God, had mixed in the ways of the world, so his, his affection is divided. He did what he should do. And he showed it. He went above and beyond showing it. We'll read on. He went after the compassion, verse 34, He went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Take care of him, he said, and on my return I will repay you for any additional expense. A lot going on there, and I could preach on it, preach on it, but I won't. This man who had a theory about religion in this world at least had some thought of an afterlife, because that's what the Samaritans believed, but was despised by us because he didn't believe it the way we believe. He's the one that offered help. When the people that should have helped didn't help their own. There's so much to this story. But so many times we're like the guy that's asking the story, well, wait a minute, who is my neighbor? Because that guy down the road over there, he curses your name. That guy over there, he spends his money on drugs and alcohol. That person over there, I just don't like him. <laughs> Whatever it is. That person over there, they're a good person, so I'll go to them. God is no respecter of persons. And he gave you grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. He filled your storehouses and your barns so that you could be rich to others. He gave you His, His Spirit to comfort you, to guide you, so that you could do the same for others. And if you don't show that love, and this guy did it in an extravagant way, then the world's not going to see your faith. They're going to see your hypocrisy. They're not going to see your love. They're going to see your hatred. Because if you truly loved, you would be devoted to the one you say that you love. Jesus asked then, he said in verse 36, Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of the robber? You might have thought, thought at first that the guy that was down and out was going to be who the neighbor's focus was, but the focus of who is the neighbor goes right back to the religious who didn't and the guy that was distorted about religion who did. Whatever those distortions were, he did what was right. That man answered, the one who showed him mercy. Let me remind you again what mercy is. Mercy comes from love. 
because you have love in your heart. So you decide to give to someone what they do not deserve. And you've been given grace on top of God's mercy because you deserve eternal death. But instead, He gives you eternal life. A life of abundance on this earth filled with the Spirit and a life of eternal bliss completely, totally saturated and filled with the Spirit for all eternity. And you're the light of this world shining upon others. So are you living that way? Jesus replied to the man and said, Go and do likewise. If you get anything from this story, you have got to go and do because of the love, mercy, compassion, grace that God has given you. If you don't, you really don't understand these wedding vows. I can't get this ring probably off my finger. It doesn't mean as much to you. Because when I put this on, I show the world that I'm married. So not only do I not want to cheat on my wife, but I want you to see the love that I have for my wife. That's when you'll know that we're really and truly married. That it's not just a piece of paper or a commitment and the, the love has grown cold or anything else. That it's a viable, loving relationship that I would give up my life to love and serve her. And yeah, I fall short <laughs> all the time. Don't shake your head there. But I'm trying more and more each day because I understand more and more each day God's love for me. And then I can go to my children, to you guys, to the world, and show my love for them. So the question is, do you love your neighbor? That's where we got with this. Do you love your neighbor? Yes, they're the people in here. Yes, they're the physical neighbors. Yes, they're, they're your Jerusalem. They're your Judea, your Samaria, and so forth. Is it evident that you belong to Jesus because of your love? So, Christmas present, New Year's present, whatever you call it, I got some of these little promises of God, and they are various things. There's 50 of them, not 52, so you'll have to decide how you're going to do it. But you can take one out each week and read it and ponder on it. Because, you know, this is God's promise to you. Because He chose to love you. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. John 10.10 10. That's God's promise to you from Jesus. That's why He came to this earth. He gave up heaven and came to you because He loves you and He wants to give you life. Be happy. Yes, leap for joy for a great reward awaits you in heaven. Luke 6.23 Wow. Are you rejoicing? Are you leaping? Are you happy? Because of the hope that you have? Do other people see it? Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Luke 10, 20. I have no ideas if, if yours is in the same order or not. So these are promises that God has given you. Sherry and I... Yeah, they're not the most artistic thing in the world. Have you ever heard of promise jars or swear jars? You put a swear jar, you put your money in every time you swear and hopefully you don't have any money in it at the end of the year. Promise jars are just promises that you put in here from whatever. I challenge you to read and meditate on God's Scripture. Put it in a jar, okay? And you only got one of them for each week. You don't quite have enough. Here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to daily when I read my Bible, whatever it is, and do my prayer time and everything, I'm going to try to write a promise back and put it back in the jar of what I'm going to do for the one that I love. Because that's what it's all about. Yeah, I love to see her do things for me again, but when I do things for her, that's when I'm showing my love. So if I put a promise back in there six times, seven times, five times, three times, however many I get that week, I'm showing how committed I am to the relationship that Jesus committed himself for me. So when you're done with this at the end of the year, this jar should be full. God gave you His Son. He gave you life so that you could light up this world. Even in 2020, and, and 2020 is gone, 2021 is here. 
so that others would see your light and be drawn to Him. Now, the free Methodists are also doing a similar thing. I got enough jars for everybody. I got enough cards mm, at least for, to share with your spouse. And if I need to get more, I can. Okay? So everybody take a jar. One family take a set of cards. Okay? If I need to get more, I will. Everybody take a schedule to just print those. Pretty simple. I got about 20 of these from the Free Methodists. And I don't know if they planned to send them out at first, but it was part of a uh, video conference we did, totally different than before. And they wanted us to stress the uh, Great Commandment and to take it literally. So this is a refrigerator magnet. And I said, well, if we're going to do this, I need some magnets. And I got 20 in the mail. I'll get more if I need to. It says, who is my neighbor? And your house is the one in the center. And the literal thing to do here is to say, my neighbor on this side is John. My neighbor on this side is Nancy. And you write them down. Then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's not too much of a burden. Eight people to physically, literally take the great commandment to. However you decide to do it. Merle, your neighbor's what? I'll use you because you've been already doing this with him. What's his name? Carl. Carl. We don't care who Carl is. It doesn't matter. Carl's written right here. And Merle goes out of his way to show the love of God however he does it, however often he decides to do it, but he makes a note, and it's on his refrigerator where you can see it. I need to pray for Carl today. Carl's sick. I'm going to take him some apple pie today. Whatever it is. You go out of your way to reach these people around you first, your neighbors, for Jesus. And then hopefully, hopefully, in the year of when the year of 2021 is over, as long as Jesus hasn't come back yet, we can have some great testimonies of how your light shined to your neighbor and made a difference. If you're not out going out and telling people about the love you have for God through Jesus Christ, then do you really and truly love Him? Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you that you did love us so much, that you wouldn't let any sin stain us too badly, that you wouldn't let any power of darkness overcome us, but instead you sent your son Jesus to overcome the world. And as he tells us in Revelation, Lord, we have overcome because of what he has done. And Lord, help us to use our testimonies to overcome as well so that we will stand worthy to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Father, it's not about us, it's not about our power or our might, but about you living through us, about the finished work that you've created in us. And Lord, help us to see that through to completion. Help us not to be trapped in the darkness, but let our light shine. That we know the verdict, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. Help us to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow after Him until Jesus returns and takes us home. We pray this in His name. Amen. One per family.